All right. Uh, good afternoon. Um, in a short while, uh, we will be joined um, by Mary Ellen McCourty, who, as you know, is the World Food Program's country director for South Sudan. Um, and she will brief you as today the World Food Program is warned that a hunger emergency is looming on the border between South Sudan and Sudan. Families continue to cross the border towards South Sudan every day because of the fighting in Sudan. She will join us virtually from Juba. Um, and as I mentioned to you yesterday, Monica Grayley will not be briefing you through uh, the week. Um, and at 1.30 p.m. here, there'll be a briefing by Reem uh, Al Salam, the Special Rapporteur against vi on Violence Against Women and Girls, its Causes and Consequences, and she's here in New York uh, to brief the third committee. Um, update for you from our UN team in Armenia as they boost the support for the government's response to address the influx of refugees. More than 100,000 people have now crossed into Armenia, according to information received from the government. Uh, the UN Development Program started renovating space for elderly persons. For its part, the World Health Organization is also sending medicines uh, for, uh, to treat non-communicable uh, diseases, covering three months of treatment for up to 50,000 people. The UN Refugee Agency is providing uh, technical assistance to authorities for refugee registration, distributing court relief items, also conducting protection monitoring in government-run registration centers. Our team on the ground is also focusing on much-needed psychosocial support to refugees, including with uh, the UN Development Program, the World Health Organization. Uh, the acting resident coordinator, Natalia uh, Nachivi Nachilvili, a uh, stress that behind each number is a child, a woman, a man, an elderly person, a family who left everything behind, urgently needed support. She reiterated the UN's team determination to provide assistance. And, um, quick update from our peacekeeping colleagues in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Um, they tell us that a, the peace, UN peacekeepers on the ground have launched a joint operation with the Congolese Armed Forces against uh, the armed group known as Codeco. The operation is taking place in the Jugu territory in the province of Ituri and comes in response to recent attacks against civilians and the presence of Codeco members in the area, including most recently near the Lala camp for displaced persons, which is about nine kilometers southwest of Jugu excuse me, southeast of Jugu. On that occasion, peacekeepers uh, were deployed. They fired warning shots as they observed Kodeko members approaching the site and, forced them, um, and forcing them to withdraw. Peacekeepers are continuing to patrol the area to protect civilians and deter armed groups, including physical protection for more than 100,000 men, women, and children who've been displaced through in four temporary bases in the Jugu territory. Uh, update for you from Syria and a bit of uh, good news, but also underscoring the uh, uh, dramatic health uh, situation. The Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs says that the first radiotherapy machine to treat cancer arrived in the Northwest over the weekend. This comes on the heels of advocacy efforts led by the UN and our partners with the support of the government of Turkey. Uh, this is a monumental step for cancer treatment in northwest Syria. Radiotherapy sessions are not available in local health facilities. Syrian cancer patients have been dependent on cross-border referrals to Turkey, and the system was temporarily disrupted uh, earlier this year due to the earthquake. The machine, which can provide more than 40 radiotherapy sessions a day, is now in the largest hospital in Afrin. The hospital is making adjustments to meet the operational standards and safety requirements of a radiotherapy center. Once ready, the facility is expected to meet the needs of up to one-third of all cancer patients in northwest Syria. Turkish health authorities are also providing support for a year with Turkish technicians and oncologists operating the machine on site and also training Syrian health workers. And just to flag that we need more support to expand access to local cancer treatment services, including in Idlib, Governorate. Um, 
the turning to Haiti, the Secretary General, of course, welcomes the adoption of yesterday's resolution, which, as you know, proved the deployment of a non-UN multinational security support mission. In a statement issued after the vote, the head of the political mission in the country, Maria Isabel Salvador, says this is a positive and decisive step to bring peace and stability to Haiti. The decision, she added, comes after a request by the Haitian government and echoed by the Secretary General, realizing that the country will not emerge from the current security situation without strong international support from the Haitian National Police. Yesterday's resolution did not approve a UN mission, but the integrated uh, office, um, Sorry, yesterday's resolution was not about the approval of a UN mission, uh, but the UN integrated office in Haiti said it will fully support the multinational security support mission within the limits of its own mandate, of course, the human rights due diligence policy, and in full respect of the decisions taken by the Haitian state. While awaiting the deployment of the mission, the UN will continue to engage closely with Haitian authorities, in particular in support of the police, the corrections and justice system, and the electoral process. Uh, and just for the record, I do want to note that yesterday we issued a statement on behalf of the Secretary General condemning uh, the attacks, uh, terrorist attacks that had taken place in Ankara the day before. Benno. Thank you, Steph. Um, a couple on Haiti. Um, first of all, um, how many police forces um, are, or, uh, did, how, how many uh, police forces have been pledged already? I think Kenya was about like uh, 1,000, but it's still pretty far away from the 2,000 you guys are aiming for, right? Yeah, I don't have the, the total numbers. As uh, uh, we know a number of countries have indicated support. The resolution calls on countries that are interested to notify the Secretary General. Right now, as far as we know, is it, I mean, the, the, Kenya is the only country officially mentioned, but obviously we will wait for others to, to pledge. Okay, and a few more. I know that you don't really like to talk about time horizons, but are we, like, to this, till the start of this mission, are we talking about like month or weeks? Will it happen this year? What What do you expect at least? Well, you know, the I mean, again, if you look at the resolution, it calls on um, the members of the of the force um, and the countries leading it to come up with a concept plan and to work with the Haitian authorities. So that's a question that should be asked right now of the the Kenyans. Okay, and the last one. And more a meta uh, question about the functionality of the Security Council. You yesterday said this was exactly what the SG said one year ago. Yeah. This is exactly what he wanted now. Um, the Security Council approved the mission, giving, given all the dysfunctionality in the, in the, in the Council. Ukraine, cross-border, uh, DPRK. Um, what's your assessment um, regarding uh, what, what this decision means? Is it like a glimpse of hope or like how do you see it? I take it as a positive development uh, that answers the call, most importantly, of the Haitians themselves and of the Secretary General to help um, to help the people of Haiti. Uh, I, I'm not in the business of extrapolating um, and see what what is the greater impact on this on uh, on the on the universe. I think I will leave it to uh, journalists and analysts such as yourselves. Uh, Amelie, then Deji, then Stefano. Thanks, Steph. A follow-up on Haiti. Uh, several um, Security Council member ambassador yesterday talked about uh, learning lessons from the past in Haiti. Um, what do you think, what the Secretary thinks is needed to avoid that this mission ends up with leaving Haiti back to square one, where it is today, which happened every time after there was a, an international mission sent there? It's about keeping the long-term goals uh, in mind and understanding that sometimes decisions uh, made in the, in the moment uh, will only increase uh, the cost and, and, and the suffering. And to the international community needs to stand by the people of Haiti for the long term. It's a long game. Deji. So a couple of questions, but first to follow up also on Haiti. Um, after the resolution, because we know that Kenya is sending about 1,000. What, 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 is, what is the Secretary General's expectation? How, how 
fast could this be assembled? This multinational uh, force can be assembled to to dispatch there. Well, first of all, you know, obviously the the faster the the, the better. I mean, not the things should. Not, I mean, but thing, thing, but things need to be done in a in a way where the force once deployed. Uh, can function. I mean, it, it needs to be done in a methodical way uh, as quickly as possible. But the onus should not only be on, on, on Kenya uh, and those uh, who may step up more officially. It needs to be on the international community as a whole, on the Security Council. They, the mission will need financial, uh, financial support. Um, so it is not, um, let, let's not put everything on the shoulders of the Kenyans uh, but, at this point. The, the, the international thing, community will need to help in whatever way they can. But the thing is, as I, as I understand, even the parliament of Kenya didn't approve of the, this I, idea. I, I right? can't speak to the internal or constitutional workings of the Kenyan government. Okay, now, now my question. What was that before? It, that's the follow up. Oh, is this a follow up? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. okay, so <laughs> it's, it's been quite, it's, it's been quite a while that we didn't ask about the, the, the latest update on the Black Sea Initiative. Okay. Uh, that, that's the question. Is there any update on oh, okay. the okay. Black okay. Sea okay. Initiative? No, I, as Stefano knows, I like to hear a question mark at the end of a sentence. So, <laughs> uh, um, the, the only update to, to share with you is that the Secretary General continues to be determined uh, to get as much uh, of the, the Ukrainian grain and Russian grain fertilizer out to, to market, and uh, his efforts and his, uh, the efforts of his team continue in that regard. The, the other day, uh, the Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov here said he was surprised that the Secretary General was still trying to fulfill the, the memorandum and uh, the MOU with Russia. I don't, I don't think anybody should be surprised by the determination, the determination of Antonio Guterres. Uh, one last question, sorry. Uh, on Monday, on Monday uh, early morning, the Israeli army carried an airstrike in Syria, in Del Azur, which is quite different because normally they would have the airstrike on the western part of Syria, but now they went to deeper into the eastern part. Does the Secretary General think this is this might be a escalation in that region because we know that the Syrian Syrian issue is quite sensitive there? Look, I mean, we have spoken out regularly and will continue to uh, uh, against the the airstrikes that we're seeing in uh, in Syria, the violence that we're seeing in in Syria, and I think all of this is a reminder of the need for a political solution and for people to rally around the work of Ger Pedersen. Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. One is, I guess, a follow-up, uh, and one, and then I have another question. Uh, on Ahiti, um, who, how did, can you tell us how uh, Kenya was actually <coughs> the country that was, I understand that Kenya offered uh, to, to be the, the leading country, but uh, because Kenya has a history with its police, and if we just Google, Kenya police violence, you find everything even just a few months ago. How Kenya was picked to be well, the Kenya, country Kenya, to provide? First of all, two, two, two points to make, three points. Uh, one, there are few countries in the world that have not had at one point or another issues with police violence, all right? I mean, and we see it north, south, east, and west. Um, what is important? And it's stated in the resolution that uh, all uh, police and others that are deployed uh, respect uh, the human rights policies and, and go through the, we will support uh, those countries with the human rights due diligence uh, policy. Secretary General did not choose Kenya. The Secretary General and the Haitian government put out an appeal and Kenya stepped forward, and I assume, and uh, we've seen reports and press reports of others stepping forward. Yes, but uh, the, the ambassador, the U.S. ambassador, was asked yesterday, um, "Who is responsible if the Kenyan forces abuse their for their their the mandate and they start to have uh, commit crime?" And is the U.S. responsible that he's, for example, putting the money? And she answered no. 
Look, the, is the, Kenya the, is I, responsible. I, I, I was so who is I, I responsible? Was asked, I was asked uh, yesterday, and I'll kind of repeat maybe a little bit more, uh, a bit more detail. Um, it is important uh, that everything be done to prevent any sort of abuse by any troops and police that are uh, that, that are deployed. Uh, we've advocated, and the Secretary General in his proposal advocated for a strong and robust prevention response system to put safeguards in place uh, on that. Again, read the resolution. The resolution is fairly explicit and says that member states participating uh, in this force take necessary measure to ensure appropriate conduct and discipline and to prevent sexual exploitation and abuse. All, we call on all member states to implement uh, that framework. It is incumbent on any member state, any member, to ensure that there's a robust oversight mechanism to prevent uh, such incidents should they, and if they occur, to deal with them clearly. Uh, you know, ultimately, as it is with, with, with peacekeepers uh, who commit abuses, member states have the ultimate authority and responsibility for the people they send abroad. Well, I, I was in this room actually with, uh, with the, the, f the former Secretary General, also this Secretary General, when there were conversations about that this system had to be changed because the abuse that the, that the Blue Helmet had in the past, that was the problem. Then, then there was the... I mean, we can, I mean, Stefano, we can but have a I, much longer conversation no, no, about okay. how the system, you know, but this is uh, 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 how the system that we've put into place right now in terms of UN peacekeepers and UN staff is much more, uh, I think, more effective, more victim centered and much more transparent. Good. Has have we been able to eradicate uh, every incident of a human being abusing another human being? Sadly, not. Right, but I think in terms of responsibilities and where these lie, it's pretty clear. Uh, Michelle, and, and I had the question. This um, and between, uh, I asked you a um, few days ago. You said that you didn't have any answer, but maybe now you have. It's about the, the migrant situation in Mediterranean, and the, and the um, agreement uh, memorandum between Europe and uh, Tunisia. Uh, now there are problems. Tunisia is, is saying like that they are not in the business of protecting uh, some other countries' uh, um, borders. So does the Secretary General have any opinion about if this agreement is uh, legitimate? Is something that it's he not for him to uh, to endorse, uh, condone, or otherwise this uh, this discussion between the EU and uh, and Tunisia, where the Secretary General wants, and I, forgive me if I've said this about 1,230 times, is for members, for countries of destination, countries of transit, like Tunisia, and they're, they're not the only one, and countries of origin actually come together and implement the frameworks that are already in place under the migration agreement. Michelle, then Evelyn. Uh, apologies if someone's already asked this. I was a little late coming in. On Haiti, the resolution also requires countries participating to notify the SG of their participation. I know we're less than 24 hours in, but have you received? No, as uh, we've just we checked in anticipation of such a question, which Benno kind of asked, uh, and Amelie and Deji. Uh, no, exactly. no, we've not. <laughs> nothing. Uh, Evelyn. Yes, uh, there, you put out a statement yesterday on Azerbaijan. That, that was so favorable, you would think that uh, the uh, Armenians were being put out and f put up in four-star hotels. Meanwhile, they've been chased out of their homes, and there are all sorts of UN agencies helping them. Uh, is there any reason that the UN put out a statement it, that it, it wasn't it, it wasn't like it, it wasn't a it wasn't an opinion statement. It was, an, it was a statement of what they saw, right? Of what they saw with their own eyes. And, what they, and it, it talked about what they saw and what they didn't see. Uh, we know very well, we have been dealing with now uh, and supporting the government of Armenia with the 100,000 or so men, women, and children who've arrived in Armenia clearly under trauma 
right, or are being treated as refugees according to refugee law, according to what UNHCR uh, tells us. Our colleagues can only report on what they saw. People can analyze and you know extrapolate. That's your 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 role and your freedom as a journalist. But they reported on what they saw. Well, they didn't see executions because there were. Well, I'm just is that. But yeah. what's the question? Yeah, no, never mind. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I have one question about uh, Black Sea Initiative. All three ports uh, on the Black Sea are back in operation. Mm -hmm. Ukraine uh, was able to organize this uh, process in, on its own, uh, without Russia, without Turkey, and without uh, United Nations. Ships with grain are on their way. Uh, I mean, uh, first 10 ships. So is the Black Sea Initiative a thing of past, or it has some future? Thank you. I mean, we're, you know, we're not involved in uh, in monitoring the ships that are uh, going out through the Black Sea. The fact that there is grain going out is is a good uh, is good news for uh, for all those involved, notably for the global food market. We continue to believe that a, a resume Black Sea grain uh, Black Sea initiative, along with the MOU, would increase the volume in a much more uh, stable. Uh, in a stable, stable manner and safer manner. Madame, and then we'll go to Margaret Bashir, who's been very patient, I think. Uh, thanks, Steph. I thought it was a good idea to, uh, you know, we had the Chagossian people coming just in uh, our uh, journalist association to give us uh, a little uh, update on how the situation is between this um, decision of the GA in 2019 to place at to give actually, uh, of the CIG, sorry, in 2019, to give the GA the power to represent the Chagossian people interest uh, here at the UN. This is a GA thing, but for the Secretariat, would the Secretary General be ready to meet the representant of the Chagossian people uh, to try to make a move in this? On I, I'm not aware that uh, any request to meet uh, has, been, uh, has been received. Uh, Margaret Bashir, Voice of America. Oh, thank you, Steph. Um, Steph, the, uh, there's a lengthy piece today out by reporters at the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project uh, that zeroes in on alleged uh, corruption, bribery at the United Nations uh, that went on over several years. And uh, I know you're quoted in the article, but if you could give us some reaction uh, to it, and just tell us maybe when did the UN become aware of Carrie Ann and Gina Zhu's activities at the UN? And have you raised this at all, for instance, with the Chinese mission or the Marshall Islands mission? Uh, we, we did become aware of their activities uh, by way of an internal investigation that was ongoing uh, regarding a, a staff member. Um, I think the the... The, the, the story and the, the underscores uh, the need for all those who have access uh, to, to this building uh, to understand that it is uh, something to be protected uh, and not to be sold in, in any manner. Uh, now, obviously, this involves a very small number of, uh, of, uh, of people. Um, and I can also tell you that we have been, uh, as we, uh, is, as it is our responsibility, cooperating with uh, local law enforcement. So, was the uh, the investigation you're referring to of a staff member was that John Victor and Colo? I'll refer you to. I, I won't say any more at this uh, at this point. Just a little follow up to uh, Stefano about migration in the EU. Obviously, you know that the EU is working on a reform of their migration system. Are you guys observing this, and do you have any opinion about uh, the proposals? I, I have no doubt that people who are involved with issues of migration as refugees are observing it. Uh, and I would refer you, rather, I think, for a more informative answer to UNHCR and uh, IOM. Uh, on that note, uh, I'd like to make sure Mary Ellen is connected from uh, Juba.